Hello, welcome to Evolve with Natu. My name is Natu, and today's episode is very personal. I have an extremely special guest. Um, I don't know how do I start this introduction without getting emotional. So this lady next to me dubs in a lot of roles. Um, she has been in my life for almost 20 years now. Wow. Yes, it's yes. been that long. Oh, wow. Yes, okay. I met her when I... We're not I... talking about my age, though. No, we're okay, not going to mention it. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> we met this lady. Oh, I met this lady, rather, when I came to Canada. My first or second month of being a student in Canada. And over the years, she's played different roles in my life. What has remained consistent is the support that she has for me. She is dubbed as my Canadian mother. She's been an aunt. She's been a sister. She has been a guider. She's been a lot of things. And I usually say I wouldn't be where I am right now if it's not for her. And a lot of people who have paved my way, but she's done a brilliant job. Deborah Wairimu, a.k.a. Mama. Karibu sana. Welcome to Evolve with Natu. Thank so if you. you don't mind telling the guests who you are, a little bit about yourself, because I know you. But these people are seeing you for the first time. Absolutely. Yes. But first, even before I tell them, I'm so proud of you for what you're doing. Thank you. I know when you started as a mom, I was like, oh, no. Uh -huh. But really, I've just watched this journey and this really suits you. So Thank I'm you. very proud of you, as you know. So my name is, as you had, a.k.a. Mama. Mm -hmm. But uh, it's Debbie Masharia. And um, I'm, I'm all of the above. And you'll get to hear about me uh, as we talk. And I'm sure I'll be asked for a lot of questions. Uh, so I don't know what I signed up for. <laughs> you know, and you get me to do anything. That's the thing. That's, that's the beauty of thing. being a mama. Yes, uh -huh. yes, when you yes. went to Morogoro and they handed over this child to you, yes. these are some of the responsibilities that come with it. And I'm so proud of you. Thank That's you. Thing. At least I get to show off what you've become. Thank you. And Thank you. honestly, I'm really so proud of you as a daughter. I think these are moments that we are proud of. You make me so proud. And you know that. I, I know that. Yes, and you, yes. you never cease to let me know. Yeah. And I make sure that I do you proud. Yeah. So, Wairimu, or Debbie, as some of you know her, is a mother. She's a wife. So, I'm her firstborn. Yes. But she has also two wonderful daughters, an 18-year-old and a 16-year-old, and almost 18-year-old and a 16-year-old. Yes. She, as I say, she's a wonderful wife to an amazing uh, Dr. Masharia, and she's a mentor to a lot of women like myself. Um, some of them also consider her mother. So one of the things I admire about you in different hats that you play in life is how you pivoted from the marketer that you were in Kenya to coming to Canada and being this big entrepreneur that you are. So walk me through, you studied marketing, if I'm not mistaken, in Kenya. Oh, I started further than that. You started yeah. further than that. Now, for the people who, because I have been privileged to know your story. So yes. tell us a little bit of how you, your, your journey started in Kenya and then how you came into Canada, because I know your first job in Canada, which yeah. is how we met. Yes. Actually, no, I'm not. I'm lying. Yeah. You and I met in a community-based activity. Absolutely. Yes, and yeah. I'll tell you how she ended up putting me in places which have paved the way to who I am as a person today. But anyways, yeah. this is your flow. Okay. Do you know your mama started, studied um, agriculture? Are you kidding me? <laughs> Yes, and home economics in university. Uh -huh. yes, yes, this is a part that I didn't know. I know. I can make for you a dress. Mm -hmm. And you know then we didn't have these electrical machines you have. So you went here the, <laughs> the pushing ones. Yes, mm -hmm. so I did those. And so basically my degree in Kenya was what you would call today a um, social worker. Okay. Yes, so, but then we called it extension worker. But before then, as I think this one you know, I did CPA, so I'm a certified accountant. Yes. Which I realized I didn't really like. And then I did I, then you discover, you know, you evolve mm -hmm. as you go on and of course I I found my way into marketing. 
Mm-hmm. But yes, my degree was actually in <laughs> agriculture and home economics. Yes, yes. Interesting. Mm-hmm. So in 2000, actually 2000, you meet a wonderful gentleman in Kenya. Oh, let me tell you. Uh, yes, yes, <laughs> yes. This is yes. one of my favorite <laughs> stories. <laughs> Do you have to tell that story? Okay. Yes, yeah, we, we can, can give the, the, tell the story. Yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. We can give the PG version. Yes. So you met this wonderful guy. Yes. Who you sweep him off your feet because I don't think he's you, he swept your feet too, but you're the one who swept him off your feet. And he is very candid to tell the story that he saw you and he knew you were the one yes. before you know it. At that time, yes. my mom was a professional, she was in her, <laughs> her own world. Marriage was the farthest thing on yes. her mind. But this yes. man comes along, he's doing his PhD in yes. Canada, and yes. he's like, I want to marry you. Yes. You come to Canada. Yes. You're starting over. Now walk me through what happened. You come to Canada, you've met this guy. Yeah. You start working I at am in love. You're madly in love. Let me tell you. Uh-huh. When you move to a new country because you're in love, you're in for a big shock uh-huh. of your life. Anyways, I come and I go to Fredericton and your dad was very sharp. Mm-hmm. He brought me during summer. Oh. So it was beautiful. The flowers were out, and I was like, I'm not going back to Kenya. No, 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 no. Yes. And then I'm like, okay, I'm educated. I have my degree. I had a good job. You know, I'm feeling good about myself. I'm in love. I'm going to get a job very quickly. But I didn't. Shock, surprise. This is the part that they don't tell you. You move to a new country. Yeah. Finding at least back then. Now yeah. people have it easier, but now at least back have then, it yes. No. Yeah, no, I, I didn't. Mm-hmm. And then because it was a university town and there was a few uh, university whites, as mm-hmm. we called ourselves. So I'm starting to, to ask people what people did. You mm-hmm. know? And so my first job actually in Canada, <laughs> should I tell you, I, I washed apartments. Ah, yes. this I didn't know. So when I met yes. you, you had another job. Yes. Okay. Yes. So me, my first job was a dishwasher. But anyways, yes. continue. Oh, well, you remember? I was yes. a dishwasher. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but then yeah. how did you do it in that show? Yeah. You, you're the one who rescued me yeah. from that job. Yes, I did. Yeah. I did. So I washed apartments for a day. Uh-huh. One day? Yes. Uh-huh. From And remember, I went because I told my husband, I cannot be a housewife. Uh-huh. I need to look for a job. I need to have my own money. Yes. So we reported at seven, mm-hmm. and we were going to finish at seven. Mm-hmm. And uh, so at the end of every day, you're given a check. Mm-hmm. So we, uh, so we are washing from one apartment to the other thing because if, if you remember, Fredericton is it was a university town. Yes. So students move out. Mm-hmm. We clean because they're they're going to be rented. Yes. So that's what we were doing. So we found everything from pizzas in the oven that have been there for a month to toilets that are not flushed everything you so yes so we cleaned we cleaned and then at the end of the day a few minutes to seven we got our checks mm-hmm. and i went home and i i said okay i think i can try being a housewife <laughs> you had to get your words <laughs> Yes, so that was it. It it was, yes, so that was really my first job. That's your first job. Yes. So, well, after that, so me, I come in 2003. Mm -hmm. I find my dear mama working at UPS. At that time, when I met her, I had just started my dishwashing job at the university. So, we are there talking, we hit it off, and then she just happens to mention that she's working at UPS. Me, I'm looking at this lady, very well put together. Not in my mind, it never crossed my mind that I could work where she works. I just admired her. Yeah. I was like, oh my God, we seem to have a lot in common. She's a little bit older than me, but like her drive, her spirit. And then a few weeks after, she reaches out to me. She's like, have you considered applying for, applying for a job at UPS? Here I am thinking, me, I came from Tanzania, no job experience, none whatsoever. Mm-hmm. If you count uh, helping my mom washing <laughs> dishes is a yeah, job. Yeah. So I'm like, how do I get there? So she guides me. And mind you, she's already there. So just to show you the type of person that you are, because I think one of the things that I want to highlight in this interview, you paved a way for a lot of women, including myself. You brought me in a job where I didn't think I deserved to be there, but you saw something in me and we got in there. 
So while we're working at UPS, I got to know her a little bit more. And this is, I'm, I'm getting to my next question. You notice there's a gap in the community and you want to address this gap. So tell me about your first business venture out of UPS, which was a business, a hair business. I know. So I realized that um, whenever we needed to make hair, if you can remember, yes, we really had to struggle, mm -hmm. including ordering products, mm -hmm. including even our skincare, like things were not available. And when we asked, um, we were told there isn't enough market. Mm -hmm. You've done business, so you know supply and demand. Yes. So they really can't stop it because uh, there's no problem. There's no, it. yes. We didn't, there weren't enough people. There weren't enough fight. people. So for me, I was like, but I am there. Mm -hmm. They should just bring it for, for me. me. I am mm -hmm. there. So I, I didn't really understand the concept because it was an interesting time. And if you remember, I thought we were enough. We were exactly. Really enough. I thought we were many. Yeah, 20 number or 30 or whatever so but uh, that's when i realized that you know um i can keep, keep complaining that we can't get these things or do something about it mm -hmm. and that's when um i thought about i'm actually going to open a shop yes yeah. and that's how i opened the shop it was one day i'm like i think i can do this mm -hmm. and 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 I, I, I opened a shop. I didn't realize the things you need to open a shop in Canada. And I didn't even have them. It's when I found the supplier, found this and said, where is your credit card? What? You need a credit card. I need a credit card. <laughs> you need other, there was other vocabularies, credit history. Yes. What? Yeah. So that's how I opened the first shop. Interesting. Yes. So she's being humble, not mentioning that that was the first, at least in my time, I don't know if for them but that was the first hair store that was catered to women of color it was also not a hair store but it was also a salon so you gave women particularly women of color a safe space for them to come and feel beautiful they'll get yeah. their hair done if you're not there to get your hair done you also buy your hair products yeah. um it was also an opportunity where my friends and I worked. So I had a job at UPS at night. During the day, I came and worked at the store. So I was one of the first people who, hi and I, I was a little assistant. I also brought my little sister who worked there and then some of my friends at university. Thank you, thank you. It was an amazing story, but 2009 hits the door. 2009, by then your spouse has finished his PhD He's offered a bigger and better opportunity in the big city of Ottawa, which is where we are right now. Business had to pivot. Walk me through that process. You had to maintain your store here and you're also studying a new life here. What had happened? Uh, I think when, when, when my husband uh, got a job here, I think every person needs to, you know, this the decision making, what do we do now? Mm -hmm. And for me, it was we move, you know. But when you move, there are things that shift around. You, you can't move with your store. Yeah. You can't move with your clients. Mm -hmm. So, you, you, you know, there's a lot of uh, start, stop, start, stop. And I think that's one thing that most women face, immigrant women face, mm -hmm. that people, we don't talk about it because it's, it's not addressed because it's easier for you because you're the one who's with the kids yeah uh, so that's what happened to me so i came and i thought again oh i'm just going to rent a chair mm -hmm. in someone's shop which i did which you did which yeah, I, I remember did. and then i was like uh, i was passing somewhere going back home and i see this police mm -hmm. <laughs> And I go home and I said, oh, I saw this place, police. I think I'm going to get it. And he said, okay, how much was it? I don't know. I think at least find out how uh -huh. much it is. And I went and find out how much it was. Mm -hmm. And they said $3,000 a month. Hey. And I said, I need to sip a drink for this. I, oh, <laughs> so I think we should. I think, should, should I continue? Mm -hmm. oh, I, I need to. 
Hey, three thousand dollars every month, and then you know me. Yeah, I saw oh, the the real estate was like, oh, okay, all right, all right, three thousand. Okay, I'll take it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Papa, you don't know where the three thousand dollars is coming <laughs> from. <laughs> <laughs> Uh -huh. And I don't know how to tell that I that I'm gonna take the shop, <laughs> you know, because uh -huh. how do I tell my husband that you're going to take a shop and you have to put in a three thousand dollar bill? Yes. And then they said other things. Uh -huh. Oh, you need first and last month. Hey, yeah, you need lawyer fees. You need insurance. You need, you need, you need a lot of you need, you need, you need. Yes, yes. Yeah, and you haven't. Retrofitted the place. Yes, you haven't. You haven't gotten the returns you on your investment. No, you haven't yet. bought any equipment. You don't have Yes, equipment. yes. Hey, uh -huh. But I got it. You got it. I got it. Uh -huh. And I did all these things. <sighs> I know. See, I, I, when I tell you this lady <laughs> is admirable, I, I I cannot begin. And maybe I should take people a little bit back. Um, it, I, I you always look at the pictures from my 20s and my 30s and I have to say when you had your hair salon in Fredericton, my hair was the healthiest. So your passion for this business runs just deep than making money. You have a passion of making sure that people have, have healthy hair, which is she, this is her natural hair, by the way. <laughs> so this passion led you to your next business venture. You yeah. opened Fusion. So tell us a little bit about Fusion because you pivoted a little bit from owning your own establishment, making sure people's hair looks pretty. Now you're producing products yes. to make sure that people's hair is healthy. Yeah. So how did you come up with this business? And tell us about the journey of Fusion. You know... Why am I really having a problem saying that? I keep saying, oh, I won't call you baby girl. Yeah, <laughs> baby girl. Am I allowed to do that? You can call me baby girl. You know, no, that's what girl. she does. Yeah, you baby girl. You know, uh, yes, I'm very passionate about hair and beauty and, uh, and beautiful women. Men too. Yeah. Beautiful women. Beautiful women, yes. And I'm blessed. And as you know, I prayed for my girls to have girls as yes. children. And God gave me girls and brought you and brought all these girls. Uh, but the hair industry is um, phenomenal. I have been, I, I, as you know, I've been behind the chair. Mm -hmm. I've done a lot of distribution for big companies. But the hair world, she has shifted. Mm -hmm. Shifted more on um, hair styling. Mm -hmm. Now, there's a difference between hair care and yes. hair styling. Mm -hmm. If you see most of the YouTube uh, videos like this one, we talk about hairstyling. We don't talk about it's, it's who has the best haircut. True. When I look at you, uh, what did I tell you? Oh, baby girl, the person who's doing your hair is good. Yes. Because of the style, the haircut. Mm -hmm. But the health of the hair, we don't talk about it. No. And not as often, at least. Not as often. And if you get that stylist who is talking about the health of your hair, mm -hmm. you will listen. But then you're like, I need my hair to look like this, like this, like this. I realized there was a gap. And because of that, mm -hmm. not ma manufacturers, of course, know that. Mm -hmm. They know how we buy the products. How do you buy your product, baby girl? You go to the salon, you open it up, you smell. smell. Mm -hmm. And you're like, wow. This smells good. And then you buy. Mm -hmm. The reason we do that, we put fragrance. Fragrance is alcohol. Because yes. we know that's how you're going to buy yeah. So even us as customers, we are not demanding quality. Mm -hmm. We're demanding something that looks good. And we smells also, good. We also like uh, a product that packaged nicely. Mm -hmm. Gold packaging or whatever. So you will buy that and it smells good. So when I realized it's a gut, especially with our kind of hair. Mm. And as you know, I like chemistry. I started getting very interested in it because in my hair salon, I realized I'm using a lot of products mm -hmm. just to finish one head. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I really, if a product is good, I don't need to be using multiple products. Indeed. If I'm doing a shampoo, I need to use one shampoo. Mm -hmm. Maybe two if I'm doing something that needs to be prepped. Mm -hmm. 
conditional needs to be conditional. It needs to do the work it's supposed to do. Yeah. But then when you realize it's not doing that, then I started questioning mm -hmm. and getting because as an entrepreneur, as a business person, by the time I finished some of because now remember, I'm a stylist who's who wants hair care. Yeah. So I'm looking at the health of the hair. Mm -hmm. But when the products I'm using is not giving me that, then mm. it's frustrating me. Yes. So that's how I got very interested in producing or creating a product or products that actually work for the health of the hair. Mm -hmm. And that's how I got very interested in in doing that. And I was not even doing it with the intention of even making my own brand. Mm -hmm. It was if I, I realized if I mix this with this and add this, it gives me what I'm looking for. Mm -hmm. So now what I was doing is, is you would come to the, to the salon and find I have concussions of things. Of products. So yes. if you ask me what I'm using, I don't even know because I was just creating Mixing something things. Yes. Yes. That, that works for... Like a chemist. Hair. Yes, like a chemist. And then I like it. I'm like, this is what I want. So I'm buying this, I'm buying this, I'm buying this. That's how it started. Interesting. Yes, and so... By the time the client was, and I had gone to South Africa that time, mm -hmm. as you know, and we had done a class on hair pH. Mm -hmm. And then I realized everything is about hair pH. On your skin. Yes, my skin. If your skin, skin is happy, yeah. you will know. If your hair is happy, you, you will know. know. You will know because say you cannot grow hair. Mm -hmm. I'm a this way. You're, grow, you're growing your own yeah, hair. Yeah, grow yeah. It's my hair. Exactly. My extensions. So. So that's how this dream started. And I took it to the lab. Mm -hmm. Next thing you know, we have a line. We have a pro and for people who are curious to learn about this line, I'll leave a YouTube link. Sorry, not YouTube. Um a website. A website. Link to the website of where you can purchase this product yes. as an individual and also uh, preferably somebody who does hair care. Like in a salon, I think it's more catered to people like that, but also yeah. a person who loves here, leave a link below. Yes. 